I want you to imagine that you're on the road or the highway or just whatever street you're driving on. You have the, your girlfriend to the right, wind is going both ways, and you look down and realize, oh, shit, there's no street. What is it that I'm driving on? Well, why is there no street? It's because I haven't told you how to make a procedural street material yet. Was that a good... <laughs> Was that a good intro or what? Um, so yeah, in this tutorial, we are gonna be making not just like a street texture that we turn into a material, no. Um, we are gonna be making a fully procedural street material. What is the point of this, you ask? Um, good question. <laughs> um, it gives you a lot of control. That's generally why we do anything procedurally. So for example, uh, the spacing of these lines we can control, uh, the thickness of them, even the color of them. So do you wanna go from like a no, double pass lane to one where you can pass. That's what the white line I think means in the US. Uh, you can do all of that. And additionally, there's a bunch of other stuff you can do. I made sure in this case to make it UV coordinates. So if you were to like re-bend the street, it would follow that direction. Basically, this material lets you make a street going in any direction. So I'm gonna talk about how to do this. It is gonna be a bit node heavy, which for most of you is like, oh, Finally, he's, he's finally doing another good node tutorial for some of you to turn off and uh, there's other videos out there for you, just like porn. Not everything is everybody's cup of tea. So I'm gonna be going over these nodes and uh, as I mentioned before in a previous video, all these little like node previews on top of the thing is because I have an add-on called node preview. There's a link in the description. It's not essential for making this. It's just gonna help with the explanation. That's why I have it. So let's get it asphalt material, but a road material. So kind of like two materials in one, let's do it. Um, so with this, it's gonna be completely material based. So immediately shading workspace. And by the way, I, I do get paranoid about these things, which is why I do. Yes, I just wanted to check that. I actually checked two times. Indeed, I am recording. How, how tragic would that be if I wasn't? Um, Okay, so it's completely material based. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a plane, make a material, we're gonna call it Patreon, you know the drill. It's gonna be available on Patreon. Everything we do here in nodes is going to represent the final output. That being said, um, it is helpful to work from reference, even for a material. So I actually went to Google Images. I found a good image of a street, very hard to find, very rare to come by. I'm kidding found this image of a street, um, and this is what we're gonna be trying to replicate, trying to get this quality of asphalt uh, with these crackly lines. There's actually quite a bit going on here, right? These aren't just rectangles. They're distorted, there's some fading, there's some crackling, there's like white splotches, black splotches, a lot to take care of. So let, let, let's get it. So first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna clear all this, start off with an empty material, and I'm gonna start off making the asphalt. So ignore these white lines, we just wanna make this kind of like segmented pattern. And you're thinking, okay, how do we do that? Uh, well, there's a texture, a procedural texture that comes with Blender uh, that already looks like that, and that's Voronoi texture. And you're thinking, okay, Voronoi texture, it's this blobular thing, uh, we can mess with it, uh, whatever. It, it doesn't really look like uh, asphalt. Well, what I want you to realize is that Voronoi, the way it's calculated, I say this every time, is you scatter a bunch of points on your surface, and then you calculate uh, which areas are closest to which points. Either way, it creates these segmented type shapes. You can almost see these lines. It becomes more obvious when we do something like distance to edge, right? It has these fragments that kind of look similar to the kind of like this crushed rock uh, thing that asphalt has going on. So Voronoi texture is gonna be useful. Specifically, if we look at the second output, which is color, so this actually just shows the segments. It doesn't really care about the distance and making a gradient, no. Just the color uh, gives us a nice amount of fragments. Let's take the, uh, si the size, the scale, the number that is called scale, and let's make it bigger. Again, the bigger we make it, the more, you know, resolution, the, the, the smaller the thing's gonna be. It's kind of counterintuitive. You're packing in more texture by uh, picking a bigger scale, which makes it look smaller. In other words, it looks the same when you zoom in, but when you zoom out, you can see there's a lot more uh, fragments, Voronoi fragments going on here. So again, you can change the scale and you can see how that changes stuff. Cool. Um, this could be a good start to our asphalt. I mean, honestly, if we just change the colors, it's already gonna look pretty good. Um, so let's try that theory. What I'm gonna do is, right now this is outputting color information where each fragment has some random RGB value. I don't care about that. I just want it to all look kind of grayish blue. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna separate by X, Y, Z. So you can see we've only taken the red channel or you can take the green channel, blue channel. Basically, these are three random number generation things you can use. Um, so th this is a good way to get free variation, three different versions. I'm just gonna use the red channel. By the way, good time to save. Call it something useful so you can find it later. Patreon. <laughs> um, 
So I've extracted only the red channel. So again, uh, color data, scale can be ignored. Okay, either way, <laughs> I don't know why that uh, drew my eye so much. I just wasn't uh, used to that. Scale can be ignored with control shift I. Interesting. Um, okay, we've, we've isolated the red channel. How do we make it look like asphalt now? Well, all we need to do is we need to change the colors. So I'm gonna use a color ramp. Um, this is basically going to be a filter for this red channel, so you can see we can make it high contrast, low contrast, whatever. Uh, what I wanna do is just pick two colors that are very asphalt-like. So I'm just gonna start off with the white, make it kind of like a darkish gray that is a tiny bit blue, but very barely saturated, it's like 10% saturation. You can see that kind of matches a little. I'm gonna take this color, hover over it, control C to copy, that's right, and then control V to paste. And for this one, I'm just gonna make like a slightly different variation. And we can play around with this later. Okay, so really all we have is two different shades of the same gray that's a little bit blue. And it kind of looks like asphalt, we can do a bit better. Um, so at this point, I'm just gonna start dragging around handles to get you know the amount of contrast. I want something like this. And you can see what really differentiates these two is these kind of like bright spots, like you have these white pebbles and stuff like that. Uh, so let's incorporate that as well. Easy to do, you just add in another color ramp handle. I'm gonna put it all the way to the right. So only things that are past the second handle are gonna make the cutoff. And uh, what's the cutoff? It's the you know handle that's gonna look white. So something like this. So you can see, uh, this is a quick way to introduce in white pebbles. Again, the way you wanna think about this is all these like little pebbles that are Voronoi cells that we only look at the red channel of, they're distributed uniformly, allegedly, um, along this ramp. So like 90% of this is gonna be grayish and then 10% is gonna be white. So if I want less white pebbles, cause it's a bit jarring, I just make that percent a little smaller. And you can see the number of white pebbles is going down. So you just wanna pick a good ratio here, and you can also pick a better color for the white because it's not literally white, it's just brighter. Something like that. Okay, so at this point, it kinda of looks like asphalt, and uh, it kinda of depends, I don't know if different countries make this shit differently, they might. <laughs> um, but really at this point, it's kinda of like a thing of taste, so I'm just gonna keep playing around with the colors a bit until I'm getting uh, something that I like a bit more. Okay, I think this is workable. We might go back to it, make it a bit bluer, uh, but you can see this is the general pattern of our asphalt. Um, so there isn't much more we can do with the color for, and stuff like this to make it look realistic. Um, the next step for making it look real is if we zoom in, you can see, yes, there are fragments, uh, but there's, there's also a bit of distortion. You have like small fragments, big fragments. It's not this kind of like stained glass looking thing. So let's mess around with the texture coordinates and see what that gives us. So a uh, Voronoi texture by default, you can see this vector input. Uh, isn't attached to anything. Uh, by default, it's using generated coordinates. So if I was to use the generated coordinate system, nothing changes because it was already there. It just doesn't show. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to distort this coordinate system. In fact, um, if we can swing it for most of this, I do want to be using object coordinates. Not a huge deal. Um, it's just that object coordinates actually uh, don't have this bounding box thing going on. Basically, in the end, we're going to convert it to UV coordinates. Is It's easier to do if we've used object coordinates this whole time. Um, but if you want to, again, a more clean explanation, again, you have generated coordinates. Let's say we were to stretch this like this. You can see it does this like weird stretching thing where it's like literally trying to update it. Uh, whereas something like object coordinates does not have this issue. So you can see we could, we could just keep stretching it forever. So object coordinates, that's the explanation. Let's use it. Uh, what I want to do is I want to distort this coordinate system a bit. And by the way, we can make this, since object coordinates are like twice the size, we can make this. Not that big, we can make it smaller. Um, what was I saying? We wanna distort this coordinate system. Um, an easy way to do that is we wanna add in randomness. That's what distortion is. So the trick I use all the time is we're gonna use noise texture. Think of this as randomness, randomness that we are going to contribute to our original texture coordinates. We incorporate both these things together by mixing them generally with mix RGB. So I'm just gonna connect both of these. Um, and you can see it, you know, it does distort our coordinate system. You can see when it's zero, we get our original. When it's one, it's all noise and in between, it's in between. Of course, it looks horrible, we'll fix that. But um, you can actually see in the node preview, this is actually why it's so useful. Um, we have our original coordinate system and we are just distorting it with noise. But you can see it's doing this shifting thing where it's going to the bottom left corner. There's a technical reason on average, we're adding 0.5 on each sample point. Uh, the way to fix this is you just change this to linear light, okay? And you can see now we're distorting it, but it's staying in the center is the idea, okay? So we just want to add a bit of distortion. 
I'm gonna change the quality of our randomness. I'm gonna make it high detail randomness with a lot of roughness. And you can see this kind of makes it look like camouflage, like it's blending into itself. And again, this linear light values how much distortion we're adding. So I'm just gonna add in a bit. Let's see what that looks like. So here's the before and then after. It's a little hard to see from so high above, but once you get in here, you can really tell this uh, detail. And you know, maybe it's not worth adding in this detail, but I think overall when you, we, nah, when we add in the bump mapping and all this, it's gonna be a big deal. So there we go. We've added in a bit of randomness. It kind of looks like asphalt, okay? Uh, let's make this thing more of a material rather than just like a color you know, output that we're looking at, okay? Uh, before we do that, I'm just gonna set up my scene so we have good lighting and all this. I'm gonna use cycles. I'm gonna use an HDRI environment. Why? Because I have a, a thing against lights. I'm not, uh, why is bigoted the thing that comes to mind? I'm not hateful of, um, what was I talking about? Lights? What am I even looking for here? I've gone so far down the rabbit hole, I've forgotten. Uh, we'll, we'll just pick an HDRI. Um, I don't dislike lights, but I think uh, for actually testing out this material, I want the nice, even uh, lighting setup. So I'm going to delete my light. Um, so at this point, we only have HDRI lighting, and I'm going to make that invisible by doing film transparent. So it's still there, uh, but we don't see it. Uh, this is useful because now we can test out materials and stuff like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this and filter it through a principled BSDF. So you can see basically everything we've done here so far is just making a color, base color channel that we're putting in here. So here's the material. Now we have color. And I'm also going to use this information for free to get bump mapping, like fake height. Um, and it's good to have your bump map correspond with your color map, map uh, because then when you see one color of pebble be higher than another, it makes sense. The, the, the textures are linked in a sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bump node. And what do we want to convert into normal information? That's what this is for. Uh, well, we could convert this, but it's already been sent through a color ramp. So I'm just going to filter the raw segments that have already been distorted. So just the red channel uh, or green or blue. Just make sure you're using the same. So if you use X, use it for everything. Okay, um, we're gonna connect this into the height socket. You can see this converts it into normal information. So now it's uh, done a differential gradient, whatever. You take this, you connect it to the normal, and if we view the uh, material, now you can see it's the same thing as before, but you can almost tell that there's a bit more depth to it. So before, it's very flat. After, it's kind of self-shadowing and stuff like this. Um, to make it more intense, I wouldn't recommend like bumping up the strength here. You could. <laughs> Um, it tends to break things if you ever bake out these textures, which is totally something you should be doing if we made this procedurally. I mean, once you're happy with it. Um, what I would recommend is multiplying it before we get here, although it does seem to not really do anything. Um, so maybe we, we do need to do the height thing, although maybe it is doing something. Pick a big number. No, definitely not doing something. For now, I'm going to bump up the strength. Uh, just know that picking a number higher than one uh, does tend to mess things up in the future. Uh, but I do like the look of it for now. So I'm going to keep it at like 1.5. Okay. Um, so for all of this, we get base color, we get bump, which is normal. And uh, for free, we can also get roughness, pick a, pick a pretty rough thing. Although asphalt's kind of reflective. It's kind of confusing. Either way, uh, we now have our asphalt. It's completely procedural. All of this stuff going into the principled BSDF uh, can be changed by the scale value, like what resolution do you want? So if we were to make it low resolution, it would look really stupid. Stupid. I sounded stupid saying that. And as we increase this, it gets more and more asphalty. So it goes from stained glass to this like pebbly uh, looking thing that actually looks pretty good. Even here, it looks like a nice little rocky uh, thing so that you could get a bunch of different results out of this. So I'm going to keep it at like 160 or whatever. Uh, cool. So we can also change the colors and do all this. But now I want to set my sights onto uh, these yellow lines that we want to be able to customize. Okay. So how do we make these yellow lines? I'm going to take all this, move it down. Um, and now we can consider these. So basically, uh, what you want to think about when you see these yellow lines is you have basically two yellow strips, I'm saying the obvious, uh, going along the x-axis. So you might think, okay, we need x-axis information to get this. Actually, no. What we need is y-axis information, and I'll tell you why in a second. So I'm going to take my texture coordinates. Um, for now, like I said, we're going to be using object coordinates for as long as possible because they have all those benefits. Uh, we'll switch them to UV later. I'm gonna take them and separate by X, Y, Z. So again, you have this line going along the X, so you think you need X information. 
um, which I am trying my best to view, but I think I, <laughs> I was looking at the wrong thing. Um, you think you need this left to right gradient, uh, but in fact, what you need is this top to down gradient, uh, this Y, uh, because this basically says, where do we want these lines? Do we want them at this height or this height? It's Y axis information. So uh, if we take this and filter it through, easiest way to do this is with a compare node and we increase this number, you can see immediately we get a nice strip that we can not only control the thickness of, but also the position, okay? Uh, let's talk about why this works. Uh, what the compare node does is it takes input one, in this case, the Y coordinates, this top to down gradient. So we're looking at how high up we are on the plane. We are gonna compare it to the second number, which is basically kind of like the midpoint of this line. It's saying, where should it be? And we're saying, only make it white if it's within this distance, this threshold, of, I guess, 0.07 between these two numbers. So again, this is gonna be our midpoint. It's saying, where are we gonna be comparing? And this is saying, with what threshold are we comparing? So this is why we're using Y axis. We need the height. Um, for this, I'm gonna set it at 0.25, so slightly above zero, which is this X axis. And I'm gonna make another line, which we can just put down here, here. And uh, we, since we want it to be like symmetrically beneath it, uh, we're gonna reflect it across the origin. So instead of 0.25, negative 0.25. So you can see uh, we have two versions of the same thing. Okay, we take this, we add them together to have both their contributions, and now we have two uh, lines. Uh, but we wanna kinda maintain this control of like picking this, even though we always know it's gonna be symmetrical. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in some parameters. So I'm gonna put in a value here so we can pick it. And also here, although remember that the second version, we always multiply by negative one to make it reflect. So when it's 0.25, it's gonna be negative 0.25, et cetera. Um, and now we have a single slider that controls this. So think of this as our spacing um, parameter. Shift, right click, drag to do what I just did, by the way, okay? I'm also gonna add in a second parameter. You can think of this as our thickness. So that's the threshold, the epsilon that we care about. Um, and this we typically set to like a number that's like 0.1 or something. So uh, there's our thickness. So we can just call it thick because it's a dummy thick. And uh, for the second one, we can call it space because it's our spacing. <laughs> cool. Um, so now we have uh, procedural control, both these things. I'm gonna pick 0.25 for the spacing and for the thickness, I don't know. I mean, we, we can always change these later, which is the point. I'm going to pick 0.075 or something. We could literally overlay this on top and see what looks good, but there we go. Um, so this is the basic uh, setup for our lines. We're going to make them look a lot better in a sec, uh, but I want to start incorporating them into our BSDF. So uh, since we want this to be I mean, if you think about how this thing's made, you have asphalt and then you have two dudes who hopefully are being paid enough, uh, literally just going out and painting this thing, or maybe they have this vehicle that paints as it you know, drives. Point is, uh, first there's the asphalt, then the paint goes on top, which is why there's this crackling, because as it ages, it kind of wears off and shows the asphalt underneath. In other words, what we need is a mix RGB since we want to overlay something on top. So I'm taking my asphalt, I'm gonna use this as the factor. In other words, where should we overlay? And then for the color we overlay, it could be whatever color. So let's see what this looks like. So there we go, we have our lines. We can pick the color uh, that it's gonna overlay. Again, factors saying, where should I put this on top? Well, we made this factor, um, and then the color we're, we're putting on top is that color. Um, in fact, while we're here, I wanna change some of these numbers now that I can see them more clearly. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, we could do a bit more to this, like we can incorporate it into the bump, et cetera, and we will, um, although, before we do any of that, I wanna make my lines look better. So a couple of things you're gonna notice, they're not perfectly straight, they're a bit distorted. And uh, second of all, we have the crackling. So let's take care of both those things. As for distortion, we already know how to do this. That's what this linear light uh, situation was for. In fact, we might need to make a, a new one for this, but we can try it. In fact, instead of using object coordinates for this setup, again, this is our line, let's try using these distorted coordinates and see if they already look good. If not, we can make a new set. So you can see this distorts them. So here's before and after, adds a good, a bit, of, a good bit of distortion. Um, I think technically it's okay. We could like make another setup with a different linear light combination that gives us like more, I don't know, like more of the look we want for here. Um, but a good reason to not do that is the lower the number of noise textures and Voronoi textures and like these orange things, these procedural textures, uh, the less 
the less you have of them, the faster stuff calculates, because these actually tend to get a bit expensive computationally. So if you can swing, not adding in a bunch of nodes, it's helpful. So for this case, I'm gonna just do it off principle, okay? Um, so we'll just keep these uh, as is. So this is our distorted coordinates thing that I guess we're gonna be using for both of these. Um, second of all, first of all, let's actually pick a nice color. We could either do this by hitting E for eyedropper and just picking a shade of yellow. I'm just gonna do it manually and pick a color that I like. We can always go back and fix this. Something like that. Um, the other thing that's very important to getting this to look real, what? Uh, we wanna add in cracks is what I'm trying to say. We wanna subtract away some, some of this uh, paint. Uh, remember that uh, to get crackling type of effects, we already talked about how Voronoi, and I'm going to add in a new one since we want this one to be different than our uh, first one. Uh, we talked about how Voronoi with the distance to edge already gives us this nice crackling look, which is useful because we're actually going to be using it for this. So I'm going to use this Voronoi texture. I'm going to filter it through a color ramp to get a bit more of a high contrast thing. We mainly care about these black lines. And what I'm thinking is we take this uh, line thing that we're using as the factor, and before we plug it in, I'm just going to multiply by this, and we can modify it in a bit. So you can see what this does is it takes our lines and kind of subtracts away uh, wherever there's these dark lines. Why? Uh, because those are the areas that we're multiplying by zero, so it goes to black, and everything else stays as is, uh, because the outskirts are also black. So multiplication is the way to go. Um, let's visualize what this looks like, and you, you can already see in the node preview what it's going to look like, but I want to see it here. Um, this definitely needs a bit of work. So first of all, uh, lines should be more frequent, so let's up the scale here. So there's a bit more crackling, maybe even more, something like 50. Cool. Second of all, I want these lines to be a bit more high contrast, so there's just areas where it is um, chipped away and areas where it isn't instead of this kind of like faded thing. So something like this. And by the way, this might be a good time to also distort these uh, coordinates as well so it doesn't look so uniform just like before. Uh, we can try using our distorted coordinates. If not, we'll make our own if I don't like the look of it. No, that does tend to work. Um, again, it's going to distort it in a way where it doesn't look as uniform. Um, but let's play around with the contrast a bit more so we could have it nice and faded. Or we could have like, again, like use multiple handles to have like a bunch of stuff going on. So it could go very dark and then up here it goes very bright again. Wouldn't recommend this setup, uh, but it is a way to get a bunch of different looks. So I'm gonna go back to two handles. Okay, I want it to be this nice high contrast kind of map. Again, it's gonna be subtracting away the these uh, cracks we made. Um, and additionally, Additionally, actually, before we uh, mess with this a bit more, I do want to incorporate it into our bump just to see what it's looking like. So again, paint is going on top, so technically it's a bit higher than everything else. Uh, we can just use, and I'm going to clamp this just so that we don't have any weird negative numbers, so black actually means zero. I'm going to take this, I'm going to add it to our bump. So before we actually process this and turn it into a normal mapping, what we can do is I'm going to do math, addition, in other words, incorporate what uh, this line map that we made. And now you can see it's kind of subtle, but it actually has a bit of bump. So here's before, it's kind of flat, and then after it actually has quite a bit of height. Um, okay, um, so at this point I do want to play with stuff a bit more. Now it's a bit tricky uh, with the colors and all this, because this is entirely dependent on the HDRI. If I pick like this one, you can see it has a different look. This is kind of like a sunset on the asphalt kind of thing. Here's it, what it would look like if you brought it indoors for some reason, which probably isn't a good HDRI to use because, you know, you wouldn't see this stuff indoors. This seems like a good one. Actually, this is a good argument to bring our strength back to one. It looks fine as is. Um, it looks pretty good. Again, since we've been using object coordinates this whole time, we should just be able to extend it like this and just get free detail as we keep going. And it's all procedural, infinite resolution. Um, but of course, the issue with uh, object coordinates is since this, uh, these stripes are dependent on the Y height. So we have object coordinates and all this, and we care about their like Y height. Uh, the issue is if we go like this, it kind of goes off track until we bring it back up. Um, so I'm thinking, are we ready to transition this into UV coordinates? In other words, are we happy with the result or do we want to play with it a bit more? I'm thinking we want to play with it a bit more. 
I think another thing that would make this look really good is we have all this like crackling. Uh, that is the asphalt and we turn it into bump. I'm thinking, could we make it so that the paint has less of that going on? So the paint's almost a bit smoother. Maybe, maybe. Uh, let's try it. So basically, this is our original bump. Of course, we've incorporated in these lines. Huh. Maybe if we just enable clamp, that would do it. Let's see what this looks like. Does look a bit flatter. Basically, what clamp is going to do is wherever it's adding, um, specifically on the line, if it goes above one, it maps it back to one. So we can't have additional bump information like 1.2 and all this that could be visible. Um, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, let, let, let me try doing a custom one, and if not, we'll just go back to this. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to take this original uh, bump. I'm going to take it. I'm going to multiply it or maybe subtract. We'll see. We basically don't want it to show up wherever these lines are. So I think maybe subtraction is the way to go. So we have all this. Yeah, I think it's going to end up giving the same result. So what I'm doing here is I'm subtracting away bump information from here. And then if we were to like use this as the height, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think I'm going to end up using the original. Uh, but in theory, in theory, what you can do is kind of decrease the amount of crackling uh, by a bit. You could decrease the amount of crackling by a bit or maybe just have it be a base color effect and uh, have the normals be a bit smoother. I'm really conflicted about whether or not I should be doing this. Um, you know what we could do? We could actually have a version that uses this ver this thing that doesn't have the crackle. I'm going to try it. And then and then I will lay this to rest, I promise. So let's, um not that, uh, let's take this. We are going to do the same thing. I'm going to subtract away now the clean line version. So here's what this looks like. So basically there's bump except for these trip strips that I'm uh, removing. And I'm sending that into the height. Yeah, and basically... Uh, this way, we still get the crackling, but only in base color. Uh, but the actual thing itself is a bit smoother. That's how you do it. Uh, looking at it now, I don't like the look of it. So I, I am set on this, finally. But just so you know, that's a thing you could do. Um, okay, okay. Uh, so we have this. Let's uh, talk about how to transition this into UV coordinates so that we don't have the issue that we talked about before. Okay? Well, luckily for us, this whole mess, this whole mess... Um, basically boils down to these texture coordinates that we're inputting. And even uh, without these, uh, literally we're only using a single object coordinates input, and that's going into this whole node group. So uh, if we just transform these into UV coordinates, we'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to add this in here. You see if we add in UV coordinates, it's going to give us roughly the same thing, but it looks like it's zoomed in and transformed a bit. The reason this happens is you can see object coordinates are centered here, whereas... UV coordinates are centered at the bottom left corner. So to fix this, we just need to do a transformation that makes our UV coordinates look like object coordinates. Um, it's pretty simple. So we're going to take our UV coordinates. I'm going to do some vector math. And this will actually be a great use of node preview. Link in the description. Um, so you can see here are our UV coordinates. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to move this origin over here. In other words, we want to move it on the X and Y axis by like negative 0.5, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, that's going to do it. So you can see now we are centering it nicely. Um, so in other words, since the origin is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, you want to do the inverse to get it to move there. It's kind of confusing. Negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Also, you're going to need to, so if we were to use this as the coordinate system, you can see it almost gives us the right thing, but again, it's too zoomed in. Uh, this is because object coordinates go from 0 to 1 on negative 1 to 0 to 1 on x and y. Long story short, you take it, you multiply it by 2 is gonna give us the correct thing. Uh, so if we were to look at uh, the original object coordinates, you can see, if we remove this, you can see that this um, actually looks like that is the uh, point here. Um, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna connect it here. In other words, this is the, whoops, the texture coordinates we're gonna be using. So again, what did we do here? We replaced object coordinates with something that is dependent on UV coordinates. Um, so in the end, this whole result is going to be a uh, UV based, uh, which means now if I was to put a cut here and move it, it actually deforms with it because that's one of the properties of a UV map. Now, of course, we do have the issue of if I try to extend it, it does this weird stretching thing. Um, the reason this happens, by the way, this is a cool way to make a worn 
kind of street. However, uh, the reason this happens, if we go to the UV editor and look at the UV map, uh, literally only the first face has a UV map and the second one over here, let's link these. Uh, the second face, I'm trying to select it, is literally just this very fine edge, which is why it looks like it's stretched. It doesn't have any space to breathe. Um, so if I was to like, let me make a transformation of some kind. So I'm thinking we'll extend the street like this, and I'm gonna add in a bit of a bevel so it kind of curves a little. If I was to do this, we need to make a new UV map that's like uh, straight going along here. Uh, the way to do that is you select everything, pick an active face, right click, and then follow active quads. If I can find it, you follow active quads, boop. You can see it makes a nice flat UV map and that makes it curve with it with all its procedural uh, detail, uh, which is cool. So I'm just gonna undo all this. We don't uh, need it for now, uh, but just so you know, that is an option. Uh, long story short, we have our UV coordinates. We have our two parameters. Of course, we could expose a bunch of other parameters. Uh, but for now, I'm happy with this. Roughness is at a thing, metallic's at zero, fine. Uh, so I'm gonna take everything here and I'm gonna hit Control G to group it. And now we have a nice little convenient uh, node group that we have control over. So again, we're literally only feeding in UV coordinates here that we did transform in here. Nobody needs to know that. That can be our little dirty secret, okay? Uh, but we did transform them in here. We also have this, this uh, thick number which again is the thickness of this line. We have the uh, spacing. And I'm thinking I also want to uh, expose the color of this, which is super easy. So again, uh, this little RGB thing is the color of these lines. Uh, let's expose that by adding in another parameter. So you just go to the group input. So in other words, what things do you want exposed? Another group input for the color, which will automatically give us a socket here. So we can make it a white line, a yellow line, whatever, okay? So that's how you make the procedural street material. The only other thing to talk about is how do you make those like, instead of like one solid line that goes on forever, um, how do you make them like segments of lines? You know what I mean, there's spacing in between. Um, if people are interested, I can make a follow-up video explaining that. Uh, if people care, it's kind of like a quick little fix, but otherwise it's everything's the same. Uh, let me know if you care about that. But otherwise, that's the tutorial. I hope you learned something. What is this stuff on the right as I point my hand to the left because the webcam's flipped. Um, it's a list of patrons. Uh, 770? No, uh, definitely above 700. Uh, there are quite a few patrons and I always wonder why, uh, but here's a reason why. Well, first of all, they may want to support this channel and the CG Matter channel. Maybe they like the tutorials, they want to support it, uh, but really what they get in exchange for becoming a Patreon patron, link in the description, is they get access to blend files. So for example, this blend, this procedural material, you don't need to make it yourself. You can just download it. Any other blend I've ever made over the last two years or so, I think I started it two years ago, uh, you can also get with a one month uh, subscription. Download whatever you want. Use it wherever you want. Uh, you get blends, you get exclusive tutorials, tutorials that I do not post to either channel. Uh, yesterday I filmed one about how I make uh, beats for the background of my tutorials and videos. Sometimes I make my own music. I talked about how to make a, a little song. Just uh, things that I would not put on either channel but are kind of detailed. Additionally, uh, early access to tutorials, so some people, a lot of people, 700 some people, uh, were able to watch this tutorial perhaps multiple days before you, definitely a day before you. Um, and also Discord, stuff like this. All of this exists on Patreon. There's a link in the description. Um, and uh, yeah, also node preview, that thing with the images, with the nodes, also link in the description. But other than that, that's the that's my time. I hope you learned something about it. And I think uh, we, we did a really good job at uh, making this look uh, realistic, I think especially when you put it in context of a scene and all this. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you learned a thing. How long have we been going? 34 minutes. Okay, I'm, I'm going to end it here. Bye-bye.